And uh, we have Alana Roth, who's the Senior Customer Success Manager at Mountain, who is the sponsor for this uh, virtual forum today. Um, so Alana, thanks so much for being here. And, Thank you for um, having me. Yeah, of course. And um, I'm the senior editor at Custom, as um, Jim mentioned, um, within D Digital Media. And I'm looking forward to chatting with you today, Alana. Um, so to dive right on in, the first question that I have for you is with the recent shifts to the TV industry, primarily the understanding that advertising in the space isn't just for awareness and is actually ripe for performance advertising. Um, marketers focus, as you know, has increasingly shifted to the creatives themselves. So with this in mind, purpose-built creative strategies are certainly emerging. Can you describe the mindset and the purpose behind purpose-built creatives? Yes, absolutely. Um, this strategic shift towards performance on the living room screen has really placed a greater importance, not only on the creative that brands produce, but how they produce that creative. Purpose Built Creative is made with a mindset that takes into account both the artistry necessary for producing those stunning TV ads, as well as the business goals that those ads are meant to accomplish. And because of how performance capabilities of CTV, brands really need to be highly intentional about how they are planning and producing their ad creative. It needs to be purposefully built with performance campaigns in mind from the very beginning. Yeah, absolutely. And with those in mind, there are certainly many steps involved um, in such a strategy. So what do teams need to know and what do they need to do to prepare to make a shift to this purpose-built creative strategy? Can you go into what steps are involved in this strategy? Yeah. Purpose-built creative shouldn't feel like a daunting undertaking with a high price tag either. It's merely looking at creative production through a more artistically strategic lens so that you're producing content that has the best chance of resonating with your audiences, right? So for instance, a low lift approach that can still make a big impact would be to isolate the creative elements of your call to action, you know, adjusting the on screen call to action so that its messaging is intentionally designed to drive specific performance metrics is a great way to be purposeful with your creative without depleting your budget or bandwidth. You know, of course, you can't produce performance, um, purpose built creative without first knowing your performance goals. So at the top of your campaign, it's really important to be clear about what you want your campaigns to accomplish, right? These details will influence a huge part of the content of your ads. And that could include things like what KPIs will you be measuring? Which target demographics are you looking to reach? Um, and what do you want and hope to learn about your audience? And these performance goals um, that you identify will directly inform the creative production process. So in the pre-production phase, look at creative variables and attributes that you can isolate to optimize performance, right? This in turn will inform how much footage you'll need to capture so you'll see the desired results. And those could include concepts, messaging, featured talent, locations, call to actions, things like that. And with these goals and concepts and creative variables identified, you are then ready to head into production. With clearly defined goals, you should look to schedule your production so that you capture all of the footage that you'll need for your creative variation in one production day. And because you have planned for every variation at the start of your campaign, this will also eliminate the need for reshoots, really helping you maximize your creative budget. And from there, once the final cut of your first set of purpose-built creative is delivered, you are ready to launch your first CTV campaign. 
Fountain makes it super easy to launch campaigns. It's a simple drag and drop interface, it's easy as that. Um, and some of the metrics that I always suggest my clients should monitor are things like cost per visit, visit rates, conversion rates, ROAS, impressions, um, video completion rates. These are all metrics that we want to be able to look at what's pushing the performance needle, right? So you can really use those learnings to iterate on your existing purpose book creative so that you are only delivering ads with a high impact and pausing down to the ones that are falling short. Perfect. And with, um, with this in mind, you know, we're primarily focusing on video creatives. So can you dive into what teams will need to do to make sure they're prepared to produce video creatives um, in this manner? Yeah, yes, absolutely. So if it wasn't plainly clear, unlike reach-based campaigns on Linear, you are going to need a higher volume of videos to fuel your performance campaigns. In the old linear model, you may have been able to get away with producing a couple commercials per year to raise awareness for your brand, but two commercials a year is not going to help you drive those measurable outcomes in a performance-focused CTV campaign. Um, that being said, you know, unlocking scale can be a tricky budgetary problem for many brands, both large and small. You know, as I've mentioned, there are a couple low lift approaches like focusing on CTA variations that can help you create more videos without breaking the bank. But, you know, without an increase in your overall video volume, you simply won't be able to make as many strategic creative optimizations because you won't have enough content to play with, right? But producing video at scale doesn't have to balloon your budget. That can be facilitated in a couple of different ways. One being gaining access to a creator network, like through our partners at QuickFrame by Mountain. QuickFrame provides brands with a cost-effective way to produce any type of video for any use case or audience. And what's great about QuickFrame is that it also allows you to work with a diverse array with experts um, with nuanced perspectives that you wouldn't be able to necessarily get from traditional production approaches, whether that's an in-house team or agency. Um, and two, you can also leverage innovative services that bundle media and creative together, services that allow brands to produce creative at no extra cost other than what they already intend to spend on media. Um, and Mountain is actually already doing this through a service called Creative as a Subscription, um, or what we call CAS. So with these TV ads at scale, you'll really be able to create like a revolving door of fresh ad creative that you can swap in and out of your campaign as it progresses, ensuring that your audience doesn't become fatigued by watching the same ad over and over again. Wonderful. And um, with this in mind, how should retailers specifically be thinking about and using this strategy? Are there any tactics or formats they should keep in mind? Um, can you think of any, you know, examples to share um, in that regard? Yeah, I think if a brand knows that they want to target different audience demographics or if they have specific goals in mind, they should take these into consideration as they plan creative for a campaign that will resonate with these audiences and achieve those goals. Um, a great example is that every ad needs to hook the audience within the first three to five seconds. This is especially important on CTV as that hook kind of rips viewers' attention away from their phones and back to the TV screen. I don't know about you, but whenever I'm watching TV, I always have my phone close by, if not in my hand, ready to start scrolling as soon as those commercials pop up. So having a hook that kind of grabs my attention away from my phone and back up to the TV is really crucial. For example, if you know at the start of your campaign that you want to attract Gen Z and baby boomer audiences, then you can kind of strategize your creative production so that you produce multiple variations of your hook tailor-made for these different target audiences, right? By producing variations, you can stay creatively agile, really tactfully swapping out hooks to drive increased performance if the ad isn't pushing the needle on your objectives. Um, this 
think work for messaging and call to actions. For instance, if you find that an ad isn't driving the traffic that you had anticipated, you can swap out an end card CTA for one that is present throughout. Um, our studies actually show that ads with the CTA logo and URL experience a 41% lower cost per visit and 112% higher conversion rate. So you really want to be sure that you have those three things included on your creatives, a CTA, a logo, and a URL. Um, when it comes to formats, I think unboxing videos are always a popular style for retailers specifically. Um, this style where the viewer watches someone open a package and explore the products inside, I think establishes a layer of authenticity within your creatives because it feels user generated as if the ad was kind of organically made by an actual customer. And these unboxing uh, videos are also a great format for purpose-built creative, right? As you can feature a wide assortment of products for various evergreen or seasonal promotions, really easily swapping out on-screen text, graphics, CTAs to drive better performance. Awesome. And do you have an example of a brand that you've worked with and that's used this um, strategy and seen success from it that you can share? Yeah, I have a client that um, sits in the health supplement vertical and they're actually in the middle of their second round of production with Mountains Creative as a subscription. Um, their creative team was really struggling to get new creative out in the market and we were reusing the same video quarter over quarter. Um, after years of viewers being exposed to the same ad over and over again, you can imagine their ads became less and less impactful and effective over time. So this eventually led to extreme creative fatigue, uh, decline in performance. Ultimately, we saw revenue kind of suffer because of it. So this team desperately needed some new creative. And since they didn't need to spend a penny more in order to unlock access to our creative as a subscription program, we were able to bundle their creative and media together at no additional cost. And now we are producing two net new creatives every single quarter with actors, scripting, concepting, as opposed to once or twice a year at no additional cost for them. And I really think the best part about leveraging this program, in my opinion, is that our clients are working directly with the experts in the CTV space. So they know the importance of producing purpose-built creatives made to drive performance. You know, these creatives from their inception take into account both the artistry necessary to produce high quality TV spots, as well as the business goals these ads are meant to accomplish. So, and it's been great since rotating in these cast creatives on a quarterly basis, my client has seen ROAS increase 20% year over year. And on top of that, we were able to test multiple different creatives to different audiences. We were able to test different actors, concepts, messaging to really better inform and drive our creative strategy moving forward. Wonderful. And with this being such an evolving space, I'd love to look uh, to the future. So what's one thing that you've seen or learned recently that you think we should keep an eye out for the rest of the year and maybe even into 2024? Yeah, I think we will continue to see creative marketers kind of expand their production resources beyond just their usual in-house or agency teams. You know, at Mountain, which I've mentioned, we have a first of its kind program called Creative as a Subscription, which gives marketers creative at no extra cost other than what they had already planned to spend on media. And this means more marketers can get more video content without increasing their overall production budget. Um, creative as a Subscription is powered by QuickFrame, which connects brands with a vast and diverse network of professional creators and production companies with unique skills and perspectives on creating content, right? So marketers will submit their creative briefs, creatives will, act, will actually bid on projects, and QuickFrame then matches the brands with the right creator to bring their ads to life. And I think, you know, this marketplace approach, we believe will be really popular in the future, as it gives brands of any size a more cost-effective solution for producing net new ad creatives at scale. And it also give, gives agencies and in-house teams and external production resource to help them scale content without depleting their bandwidth, which we know is always an issue. 
But I think in addition, you know, whenever we talk about creative in 2023, there's a big elephant in the room being generative AI. You know, how is it going to impact creative marketers and their process? So many of the products and tools that we're seeing come on the market, I think, will ultimately help creative marketers work smarter and produce ads faster, you know, like how ChatGBT can quickly facilitate creative brainstorming. You know, I definitely think there's going to be products that come online that use generative AI to produce net new video ads. Um, While it may not hold the same creative prestige as live action production, I think AI tools with capabilities like that will help lower the kind of financial barrier to entry that so many brands have, especially SMBs, so that they can kind of get into the the TV advertising space. Um, AI helps streamline creative workflows. Brands and marketers will have more bandwidth to kind of think creatively and stay agile, meeting those huge cultural moments with ads that are net new. But that said, I think, you know, while AI will streamline that creative process, that doesn't mean that it should replace the artistic people that are actually creating your ads, right? I think the human creative touch is so vital in establishing the authentic connection that audiences really want to feel from effective advertising. So ultimately, I think together, you know, marketers will be able to use AI to really move at speeds that they never have before. Yeah, absolutely. Well said. Well, thank you so much, Alana, um, for this fantastic session. Um, So, and thank you again to Mountain for sponsoring this virtual forum. Um, I'm going to pass it back to Jim um, to continue the session. So take it away, Jim.